filled by the Lord with the spirit of understanding. Blessed Bernard ministered streams of clear teaching to the people of God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the feast of Saint Bernard, a doctor of the church, one of the great reformers of monasteries. We pray especially for an increase in vocations to religious life, and we ask especially on this day for a renewal in our own faith and commitment to Jesus Christ and his church. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who made of the abbot Saint Bernard a man consumed with zeal for your house and a light shining and burning in your church, grant through his intercession that we may be on fire with the same spirit and walk always as children of light. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. I mean to display the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned among them. And the nations will learn that I am the Lord. It is the Lord who speaks. When I display my holiness for your sake before their eyes, then I'm going to take you from among the nations and gather you together from all the foreign countries and bring you home to your own land. I shall pour clean water over you and you will be cleansed. I shall cleanse you of all your defilement and all your idols. I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I shall remove the heart of stone from your bodies and give you a heart of flesh instead. I shall put my spirit in you and make you keep my laws and sincerely respect my observances. You will live in the land which I gave your ancestors. You shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Your response is, I will pour clean water on you and wash away all your sins. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. 
not deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Give me again the joy of your help, with the spirit of fervor sustain me, that I may teach transgressors your ways, and sinners may return to you. I will pour clean water on you and wash away all your sins. For in sacrifice you take no delight, burnt offering from me you would refuse. My sacrifice, a contrite spirit, a humble contrite heart you will not spurn. I will pour clean water on you and wash away all your sins. Please stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to speak to the chief priests and the elders of the people in parables. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a feast for his son's wedding. He sent his servants to call those who had been invited, but they would not come. Next, he sent some more servants. Tell those who have been invited, he said, that I have my banquet all prepared. My oxen and fattened cattle have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding. But they were not interested. One went off to his farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was furious. He dispatched his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burnt their town. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but as those who were invited proved to be unworthy, go to the crossroads in the town and invite everyone you can find to the wedding. So these servants went out onto the roads and collected together everyone they could find, bad and good alike. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. When the king came in to look at the guests, he noticed one man who was not wearing a wedding garment and said to him, How did you get in here, my friend, without a wedding garment? And the man was silent. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him out into the dark, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. In this parable, Jesus is really challenging his listeners who would have picked up that the wedding banquet was a reference to the great kingdom of God. God wants all of us to come into his kingdom and to delight in his kingdom. You think of the joy, the feasting that takes place at a wedding banquet. And the servants that God sent to invite people to the wedding banquet, to invite people to come to the kingdom of heaven, would represent the prophets that God sent throughout salvation history. We know that the prophets weren't often welcomed, and their message was either challenged or rejected, even by God's own people. But God doesn't give up. He continues to send prophets, messengers, people who were sent to proclaim God's goodness and truth for all people to share in. And yet, people would find excuses. 
their own reasons for rejecting God's invitation. Well, God ultimately sent his only begotten son who was now standing before them, making it very clear that he indeed is the bride that has come, sorry, he is the bridegroom that has come for his bride, the church which is made up of believers of all nations as we heard prophesied in Ezekiel today. That each of us would be washed clean in the waters of baptism and given garments to come to the wedding feast. Again, when there is a reference in the parable today for all kinds of people being invited, good and bad, Jesus is showing that he has come to call not just God's chosen people, the Jews, but he has come for Gentiles too, those who were considered bad by the Jews at the time. But this invitation doesn't mean that you can just come and do whatever you like and expect to receive the goodness of God. It ends with a rather challenging point that if you're not wearing the garment that God gives you to share in the feast, in other words, if you're coming on your own terms rather than seeking to enjoy what is being offered by God himself, then that's ultimately going to end with weeping and gnashing of teeth. That this great feast that we now are invited to share in as Christians in the Holy Mass is one that is not just a privileged position. It's not a right that any of us have just by walking into the church. We come here humbly accepting that we were invited by God and that what we receive is a gift offered to Him. And so if we are to come forward, brothers and sisters, to enjoy the fruits of this great banquet, the Holy Eucharist, which is God with us, we don't come in any way demanding the Eucharist as a right, but we come humbly, open to receive him, and having confessed any grave matter or anything that might prevent us from truly enjoying the fruits of what God is offering us. In other words, we come with clean hearts, having confessed any serious sin and having professed that God is the one who has invited us. And so on this day, let's pray that inspired by the saint, we celebrate Saint Bernard, who dedicated his life to the service of God in a hidden way, having established over a hundred monasteries throughout Europe, having really helped others to connect to God heart to heart. We too might be willing to do that in this Holy Mass and at every Mass.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We offer to your majesty, O Lord, the sacrament of unity and peace as we celebrate the memorial of the abbot St. Bernard, a man outstanding in word and deed who strove to bring order and concord to your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Bernard, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, we humble, therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially of the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Bernard and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope and Anthony our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love, says the Lord.
Let us pray. May the food we have received, O Lord, as we honor Saint Bernard, work its effect in us, so that strengthened by his example and instructed by his teaching, we may be caught up in love of your incarnate word, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just before the final blessing, uh, thank you for your faith and prayers. We continue to pray for each other and for all those who are especially vulnerable in our community, for all those who continue to pray along with us, uh, through the live stream as well. It was quite uncomfortable today having to wear a mask, uh, giving Holy Communion. However, this is something that we are being asked to do. So if you do have a mask, we encourage you and ask you to wear them where you can and offer up that discomfort, especially for those who are struggling and much more uncomfortable than we are, whether it be in hospital or in intensive care units. So let's continue to help each other and above all come here in trust and confidence that God is indeed looking after us. The Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life.